Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. We're joined today by a special guest, Jeff Manchester, product specialist at Isotope is here. You got some cool stuff to show us. I do. Uh, we have a lot to cover. We have new updates to Neutron 2, Ozone 8, Total Balance Control, Mixtap, Visual Mixer, a lot of ground to cover, but we're really excited about it. Holy smokes, that's a lot going on there. Yep. I've had a chance to check some of the uh, the new features out in both uh, Ozone 8 and Neutron 2. You guys are doing some spectacular stuff. I mean, it's so powerful for getting your mix together. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, Ozone is great for both mixing and for mastering. That's right. You're running it standalone, it works obviously ideally for uh, for doing mastering, but you can also, with those on Advanced, break that out and use those plugins inside your DAW. That's true. You can run them as component plugins, which a lot of people love to do. Uh, you can run it standalone. We have great new power and abilities for people who want to do referencing. Uh, we have Master Assistant also, if we're talking about Ozone, which is brand new. People were used to Track Assistant and Neutron. We brought a lot of that smart DSP and machine learning into the Ozone platform, and uh, we think people are going to love it. Amazing. So for those who aren't familiar, what is Neutron? Neutron is our channel strip. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, Alloy earlier, and we're sort of breaking out of that sort of paradigm and going with more of a machine learning, smart DSP angle. We have uh, technology in there that allows you to analyze the audio that's passing through it, give you a custom preset, that sort of thing. And the new thing with Neutron is that we have interplug-in communication. That was there in Neutron 1 with the masking meter. If you had different uh, instantiations of Neutron in your mix, they could talk with one another. Mm -hmm. Now, Neutron 2 can talk to tonal balance control, which we'll talk about in a minute. It can communicate with uh, mix taps, and it can also communicate with the visual mixer. So now all the plugins are talking to each other, or at least aware of each other. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, with both Ozone and Neutron, machine learning. Does that mean that the plugins are kind of going to do it for you, or what does that refer to? Can you keep a secret? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the plugins aren't going to do anything for you necessarily. What they're going to do is listen to the audio, come up with a custom preset that's basically a starting point. It's up to you, your ears. You have the final say on your creative output, but we just want to make sure that if we hear things like resonant peaks, muddiness, all that stuff, we'll place the EQ notes over those areas. It's obviously going to be up to you to dip and boost where you like, but we just want to get people um, started on the creative stuff. We want to take care of all the muddiness and sort of housekeeping issues that one usually has to do when they're getting a mix started. Right. It's amazing. You, you put them in there and have them do their thing and, you, like you said, a great starting point to really get going and to, uh, to fine tune what's happening there. So, very mm -hmm. cool stuff. Man, I think the best way to check these new features out is for you just to give us a run through of what's happening here. So, I'm going to turn it over to you, right. step out of the screen and let you uh, do your thing. Thanks, Mitch. Great. All right, so the first thing I want to do is show you all the new stuff in Neutron 2. People are familiar with Neutron 1, its capabilities, its functionality, all that has been upgraded to include uh, brand new stuff like our new gate module, which was one of the most requested features uh, in Neutron 1. And we also have some changes to Track Assistant. I'm going to walk you through some of those changes right now. So, for example, I'm in this session now. This track is called uh, Catching Feels by Elijah Woods, no relation, <laughs> and Jamie Fine. And I'm going to play the piano section. And one of the cool things is Neutron 2 is now able to detect pianos. And the other great thing about uh, Neutron 2 is that its track assistant technology is a little bit more forthcoming. Before it was kind of a black box. People weren't sure what it was doing and how it was doing it. Now it tells you exactly what it's changing, what it's listening to, and what's, uh, eventually what it's going to um, introduce dynamically and processing-wise on the other end. And then you just sort of click accept and you're good to go. I'll show you that specifically now by pulling up Neutron, opening track assistant, we have uh, a new instrument drop-down menu here. We can say, you know what, this is percussion guitar, or we can say, you figure it out, auto-detect. I'm going to leave it on auto-detect. Our styles and our intensities are the same. Uh, warm, balanced up front for style, low, medium, and high for intensity. I'm going to leave it at, let's say, balanced and intensity of medium. And watch what happens here. If I'm not playing music and hit next, it's going to say I'm waiting for you to play audio. So I'm the dummy. I'll hit the space bar. We'll get going. So. It's going to determine the instrument type. Right now we're set on piano. It's going to select a preset for us and make some adjustments to the module parameters. About 10 seconds later, when I'm ready and I like the sound, I'll press accept. Now, as we can see, Neutrino, which is the instrument detection portion of Neutron 2, has detected, as I said earlier, that this is a piano. So we got that right and we can do some spectral shaping down here and add some sort of warmth and sort of light low ratio dynamics if we find any peaking or anything like that with the detail and amount slider. It's also made some changes to the EQ. It's found a couple of little maybe resonant peaks that we might want to take care of. It's made some changes to the compressor and the exciter as well. 
So one of the really cool new features of Neutron 2 is the gate. A lot of people asked for one and we listened and we've actually implemented it in a really cool way that's consistent with a lot of the functionality and customizability of our existing modules. So if I call up the gate right here, we can see first of all that it's multiband. I can solo and switch on the bands as I like. We can only have one, two, or all of them uh, active. We can sidechain. And the really cool thing is we have hysteresis and hold for all of those bands. Hysteresis is a function that was found in a lot of old consoles. And we have it here. And what it means is we have two thresholds on our gate, one that opens and another threshold that's a little bit quieter, 2 dBs lower, that closes. And this means that we'll get less chattering. We'll mitigate a lot of crosstalk issues. We'll get some really smooth gating ballistics. So we're excited to see what people do with this uh, new gating feature in Neutron 2. So one of the things that people really loved about Neutron 1 was the masking meter. And the power behind that technology was interplug and communication. This idea that if you had a Neutron on your kick and a Neutron on your base, you could open up the kick track click on masking, and then see what was happening in the other tracks, maybe negotiate some issues between the low end, between the bass and the kick, solve problems. We've taken uh, that technology, the interplug and communication, to a whole other level with the visual mixer, which I have now on my master bus right here, just after Ozone, which we'll talk about in a moment. And this is really cool. This creates an entire sort of soundstage, a picture of all your tracks. We don't listen to... Um, our mixes track by track. We listen to all those tracks together at the same time. So we thought it might be cool to have a sort of bird's eye view of what's happening in the entirety of your mix session. So anywhere you have a Neutron or even a mix tap, which we'll talk about in a minute, you can send information to the visual mixer. So right now I've got the entire mix right here. And we can see that we have our marimbas, our chords, our pads, everything is right here in this visual mixer sort of bird's eye view. So. The other cool thing is I can change gain, panning, even stereo widening all from this visual mixer without having to go track by track. And this is all possible because of interplug and communication. So for example, we hear that vocal. I'm gonna go find it over here, top line vocal hook. I can bring it up in gain, I can bring it down. Left or right. If I bring it back to the center of the mix, I can sort of unstereoize it, make it a bit tighter, a bit mono, or I can pull it apart and make it really wide. I haven't made any changes to the gain or anything. I've just widened this sound. And those features are across anything else you have in the visual mixer. So for example, I can take the marimbas, make them a little louder. And the other cool thing is I can make mix snapshots. So for example, I like this mix configuration. I'll press set. Now I have that set. And when I make some changes to this portion of the screen, let's say I want to make a very narrow mix, I'll make a very narrow mix and I'll press set. And now I have my second snapshot. And just for exaggeration's sake, I'll make a super wide mix and make everything sort of far apart and set that one. So now what I can do is essentially audition different mix scenarios instantly. So right now, I can go to A, this is what we started with. I like that. I'm How does B sound? Can't make this That's my real. narrow mix. That sounds okay. How about my wide mix in uh, mix snapshot C? Everything's really spread out. So I can quickly, instantly audition different mixing scenarios that might suit my track depending on the genre, that sort of thing. Now I talk about mix tap. You don't have to have Neutron or in fact any Isotope plugins on the track to be sending information to the visual mixer. So for example, I can see that on my bridge pads, which I'll go find in my session, right here. I have an instance of Mixtap. It's a super lightweight plugin that just sits on that track and sends information to the visual mixer. It also sends information to tonal balance control, which I'll get into in a moment. But I can control the visual mixer from the Mixtap. So I can bring the gain up and down from Mixtap. We can go left, go right. I can stereoize them from Mixtap too. We also have some great channel ops down here. We have channel swap, phase, mono. We have a uh, high pass filter. So again, all this communication is happening because of interplug-in communication, helping you get a better mix faster. 
And we also have this technology implemented for the mastering side of things because we find that people are mixing and mastering a lot of stuff together. So now you don't have to move from mastering to mixing or mixing to mastering. All of it can happen in sort of one session with tonal balance control, which again, I'll get to in a moment. But so we've covered some of the features in Neutron 2. Let's jump into Ozone 8. There's a lot to cover. So we'll just get right to it with the master assistant. People are familiar with the track assistant technology in Neutron 1 and Neutron 2. We brought some of that over to Ozone 8 to help you get started with your master. It's a starting point. It's not the destination. It's just the beginning. So when I click on the button, we see that we have three destinations again, streaming, CD, and reference. This is really cool. I can go over here into my in-app referencing tool, add a reference. I'll bring in a track by Will Daly over here, a Boston singer-songwriter, and it's going to load it up. And we have some interesting technology here that will actually segment things into verses, choruses, bridges, things that are um, different about the song and different in the arrangement. And we can actually just loop different sections right here. Now that I have that set up in the reference, I go back to my master assistant and I have again, streaming CD and reference and I have sunken ship. So basically I can um, use the reference as the song I want my source track to sound like. It's going to match the loudness. It's going to match the EQ curve and just kind of make the track that I uh, want to make sound like the reference sound like the reference. So let's actually go back to streaming since streaming platforms are now more and more the sort of debut venue for uh, new music. So what I'll do again, like a Neutron, if I don't have any audio passing through it and hit next, it's going to politely tell me to play some audio dummy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll press the space bar. It's going to analyze the audio, tell me exactly what it's doing, apply some EQ curves. Then it's going to look at dynamics, specifically the low end, if it needs to add any dynamics or take some away. Then it's going to bring up the maximizer, so we should get a little jump in level, right? Now. Then it's going to apply some dynamic EQ, just to make sure that we're not distorting going into the limiter, which is really important. And then in about 20 seconds, we're done. We'll press accept. So. If we take a look here, there hasn't been anything really done in the EQ, and that's great because mastering is about sometimes not doing anything or doing a very little amount of EQing work. Our dynamics have been engaged. It's found that the low end on the kick was maybe a little bit too much, so it's added a little bit of uh, compression, specifically in the low band. The next thing we have is our dynamic EQ, and this is really important. It's going to listen to, uh, Master Assistant will listen to what the uh, limiter is sounding like, and if there's any distortion going into that signal, it applies a dynamic EQ to mitigate any distortion so that we don't have any peaking or anything happening in the limiter. So that is, in a nutshell, master assistant. And now we have a streaming loudness. If I go into my metering over here, if I go into, let's say, short term LUFS, take a look. I caught some feel. So an LUFS of around minus 14, which seems to be the acceptable cutoff these days for streaming services in terms of the way that they normalize uh, audio. So they bring things up that are a little bit too low and they bring things down that are a little bit too high. We found the kind of sweet spot to be minus 14 LUFS, so that's what we've implemented here in this master assistant technology specifically for the streaming target. So the next thing I want to show you is the in-app referencing technology. So I brought in a reference before. It's a track by Will Daly. It's a little bit louder than my source track. I'll play a little bit, a little bit of it for you. If I press the little on button there, we can hear our reference, specifically this loop that I've chosen. If I press it again, we'll go back to our source track. Back and forth. So um, if I want to know how loud that track is, that reference track, I can go into my metering over here and go replace input with reference. So now my input will show me the loudness of my reference, and the output's going to show me the loudness of my source track. So without hearing the Will Daily track, I can see that it's coming up at around minus 9 LUFS. Mine is around minus 14 LUFS. Now let's say I wanted to match my source track to the loudness of that, of that reference track. I can go into the maximizer and go into uh, the threshold learn function and type in, let's just split the difference, minus 10 LUFS. And now I'll press learn. We're going to get a little jump in level, so you might want to adjust your speakers at home. Try to make us real. I know I'm wishing, because I'm stuck in the middle of something that I can't seem 
So now if we look at our metering, we can see that we have on Will Daly's side on the input, minus 8.3, and we have on our side, I'll just repeat the loop. Yeah, so we have minus eight and around minus 10, minus 11 on my side. So we're sort of matching things a little bit. I don't want to go minus nine. I think that's a little bit loud. I want to keep things around minus 10, minus 11 LUFS. But that's one really easy and quick way to match the loudest level based on the metering that we have and the way that we've changed it in Ozone 8. The other two things in Ozone 8 that I want to call out are some improvements to the exciter and to the imager. So people love our imager. It's awesome. Now we've allowed you to link the bands in the imager. So if I press this button here, all of the bands come up at the same time or they go down at the same time. Before we had to sort of independently set them. And the same is true of the exciter. We can link the bands here and bring our mixes all down at the same time or our amounts all up at the same time. And just like Trash 2, where you could sort of apply a different kind of uh, trashy distorted tone to each band, we can do the same thing now in the exciter. So we have independent per band functionality here. So let's say in my low band I just want to do analog, in my second band I want to do tape, and in my third band I want to do tube. You get the picture. You can independently craft a different sound for each band in the exciter. So those two things are brand new as well. We also have some changes to the maximizer. In addition to threshold learn, we have a new low latency IRC. In fact, it's called IRC LL. And if we go down a little bit further, people's favorite IRC, it seems to be, is IRC 4, which we introduced in Ozone 7. For Ozone 8, that has been improved, reworked. It's a lot more responsive, much smoother, less pumping, that sort of thing. So some new DSP all over the map in Ozone 8. One of the great new things about this release, Ozone 8 and Neutron 2, is tonal balance control. This is a plugin that comes with either Ozone 8 or Neutron 2. Now, before we talk about what the plugin does, let's talk about tonal balance. So when people think of great mixes, they think of a great totally balanced mix. But what does this mean? People out there who are mixing often don't have great rooms, speakers they can trust, or maybe 10,000 hours of ear training to achieve something close to great tonal balance in their mix. Tonal balance is essentially the distribution of all the frequencies that make up all the instruments and tracks in a mix from low to high. And a mix that has great tonal balance is a sort of pleasant distribution of all those frequencies. To solve this problem, we created this plugin, Tonal Balance Control, to give people a sort of gut check to see if they're well within the range of what is considered to be a great tonally balanced mix or master. And we did it by analyzing thousands and thousands of great mixes and boiled them down into three targets. If we look at the target menu here, we have bass heavy, think EDM, hip hop. We have modern, which is more rock and roll, top 40. And we have orchestral, which is sort of self-explanatory. You notice as I switch the targets, we have these green overlays. These represent the acceptable ranges of those respective frequency quadrants, low, low mid, and high mid, and high. When I play the track, watch as the bars sort of dance around those green overlays. You blame. Hey. I caught some feels. You keep your distance. So we can see here, our low end is pretty much in check. Our low mid is pretty much in check, but we're getting a lot of activity on the high end in this green overlay. Now before we solve this problem, I just want to say that a lot of people might be thinking, you know what, music doesn't fit neatly into three little categories. And you're right. That's why we're allowing you to go into the target menu and you can create your own custom target curve from a track you love. So I'll take Sunken Ship for example, open that up, and almost instantly it's created a new target curve for me. And I can go in and name uh, that one, and I'll call it Jeff's Dope Target. Or I can even choose a whole cluster of tracks. Let's say I have a whole record that I love. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, Maggot Brain by Funkadelic. It's one of my favorite albums. I can take that entire album and bring it in to Tonal Balance Control and create a composite sort of target curve from that whole record, which I consider to be a really well tonally balanced record. It has a great sound. So we, we allow you to do that too. Let's go back to these uh, uh, three targets for a minute. We're going to stick with Modern. And as I play this track, you'll see that we have this view, we have broad view, and if I switch over, we have fine view as well, which gives us a sort of different, maybe more detailed look that we're sort of used to. We have distribution of frequencies from the low, low mid, high mid, and high, and we can see that we're having some trouble here with the, uh, the high end. It's getting a little peaky. So, Instead of actually going to one of our plugins, one of our neutrons, one of our ozones, we can do it right from tonal balance control. I'll show you what I mean. So I have ozone 8 on my master bus right here. So I'm going to switch back to my broad view. 
And you can see how that line is sort of peaking on the high end. It's a little essy, this track. Now, instead of having to flip back between instances of neutron and ozone, I can do it all from tonal balance control. So I'm going to go down, and let's say I think that this problem is a bit more of a mastering issue for me to solve. So I'm going to call up my ozone EQ right from tonal balance control. I'll find it over here, ozone EQ. Now I'll pull it up. And we can see the EQ curve and affect it right from tonal balance control. And this is all possible thanks to interplugging communication. So I'm going to apply a bit of a high shelf here. I don't want to be too liberal with this. I'll reset my, my loop. So now we're sort of within the bounds of a typical sort of high-end uh, green overlay here for this modern target. So I'm happy about that. But the thing I'm still hearing in this is we're getting some S's. It's a little sibilant, and you might have to put your headphones on to hear what I'm hearing, but I'm definitely hearing some sort of harshness. Sibilance is, of course, strongly stressed consonants that produce a kind of shh, shh hissing sound, which can be really aggravating for your listener. We have a new tool to deal with this. So now I'm going to go into my Ozone 8, which is on my master bus, to deal with some of those S's. And I'll call up the transient shaper. Make sure that it's before my maximizer. And when I play the track, I can solo this band and bring it over an area that I find is especially sibilant. Right about there. Narrow my band a little bit. Those S's are definitely in that region. Now I can drop my threshold. and listen to what the threshold is hearing. I can change my processing, which is the intensity of the spectral shaping, from light to medium to heavy. I can change my tone. If I go a little bit up in the tone, we get a sort of lispy sound, which is not really good. Might work for a different sort of track. If we go down too much, it's a, a darker sort of tone for that spectral shaping. I'll leave it right here in the center. We can also change our attack and release times. I'm going to leave them here at their default setting of 1 for the attack and 30 for the release. I'll stop listening to the threshold. Back up the threshold a little bit, bring it back to light. Now let's do some before and afters. So here's before we introduce the spectral shaper to, to take care of some of that sibilance. Listen for those S's. Try to make us real. I know I'm wishing because I'm stuck in the middle. And here's after we introduce the spectral shaper in Ozone 8. You blame. Hey. I caught some feels. A lot smoother now. You and we haven't affected a lot of the transients around those S's. Try to make us real. So maybe he's sort of on the fly I'm before. Because I'm stuck in the middle of something. After. And if you want, you can get super precise with the Spectral Shaper in mid-side mode. So if you have something that's really interrupting things on the sides, so everything that's different uh, in the left and right channels, you can do it without affecting what's in the center, in the mono, the phantom center of the mix. So you can get really sort of precise and sort of pull out the, the deer rifle and take care of things in a very sort of intricate way, uh, as opposed to doing everything in stereo. So we have mid and side options right there. So now that I've taken care of the sort of high-end issues, the sibilance with Spectral Shaper, I'm noticing that my bass is sort of climbing up a little bit. And I suspect that it's the kick drum and the bass that are the culprit. And to me, that's a mixing issue. Now, I don't have to go to those tracks. I can do it all from tonal balance control because of interplugging communication. So if I play this track, look at the white line, how it's sort of going around the sort of upper bounds of my green overlay, which represents the sort of nice sort of uh, sweet spot target you should be in for that modern uh, target in tonal balance control. Watch what happens. So it creeps up. We're getting around sort of the north end of that target. So I can go over here, call up my kick, and make some changes right from tonal balance control. We can watch that bar come down in real time, which is indicating that we have a more tonally balanced mix. That's good. Now I'm going to go over to my bass. Maybe I'll sort of compensate for some of the changes that I made in the kick. Again, these are mixing decisions, right? So now I'm on my bass as neutron, all from tonal balance control. I want that line to come down even more. 
play some nodes over here where I'm seeing a little bit of peaky activity in the fundamental frequency. We'll restore a little bit of the mid-range too. There we go. Now that line is further south of the green overlays target. If I bring this down, we can see that we're back down to a comfortable level and we now have a more tonally balanced low end and a more tonally balanced mix overall. Jeff, that was amazing. I mean, these plugins are so powerful. Ozone for mastering and mixing, Neutron for mixing, all that communication between the two, uh, the two different plugins, all the different plugins, really, really amazing stuff. We think people are going to love it, so I'm happy you're happy. That's a good indicator that the, the rest of the market is going to love it. Too. It's very exciting, and we're glad to have you here. Thanks for coming back and showing us the new plugins and uh, the new software. So much great stuff going on with Isotope. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Mitch. You bet. And thank you for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher. I caught some feel. Keep your distance, try to make us real, I know I'm wishing, cause I'm stuck in the